Hello, my name is DJ Devin3, and today I'm going to be doing another greeting card module hack. This time, I'm going to be using these magnetic switches, security switches. Generally, they're just known as magnetic switches. The switch opens inside of here. This is the actual switch mechanism. And as you can see, this has a normally closed and a normally open position. So you can choose either a normally closed switch or a normally open switch, and this would be your ground. And just like the last sensor that I used, the little switch also had normally open or normally closed options. Option. These are options. It's nice to be able to buy one switch that can do either instead of having to buy multiple different switches, one's normally open and one's normally closed for a specific application. You just buy one and you can do either or normally open or normally closed application. Now in this application I will be doing a normally closed just like the lever on the box when you have a box that's normally closed and you open it, you want it to play the sound. Same thing for a door. A door is a normally closed door and when you open the door, that's when you want your uh, switch to trigger something. Same thing with the window. If you open a window, it's in a normally closed state. Windows are in normally closed states. That's a really easy way to think about a normally closed versus a normally open application. Uh, and I've got these off of Amazon. Uh, let's see, I've already mocked this up on my breadboard and this particular switch has about a 20 millimeter gap, let's say about right there. So two centimeters or 20 millimeters. For a normally closed switch, if it were to travel anywhere between zero millimeters and 20 millimeters, it would not trip the switch. So you have a little bit of a little bit of play there. As soon as it goes beyond 20 millimeters out, the switch is tripped. So there's a little bit of play there. Now since this is going on a door, it's definitely going to trip this switch because doors open by the foot, you know, not by the millimeter. Depending on your application, this switch might not be a good idea for you. If you need something that has a switch that will trigger when it's like two millimeters apart, uh, then you would not want to use this switch. You would want to find something that triggers when, with a much smaller gap. For me, 20 millimeter gap, no problem using it on a door. Now I know this is kind of far for this kind of electronics. You just have to bear with me. I don't have anything that can actually bring the camera down closer. Uh, I'll look into that in a future time. I'm sorry, I just don't have that capability right now. So I'll bring this closer so I can outline some of the components here, just so you can see what the circuit is that I'm working with. Here we have soldered on leads to the speaker, and then those are hot glued uh, on top of. We've got our record button switch, that's the red button. We have our 3.5 millimeter input jack for the audio and one, two, three coin cells. We have this contact here. I am not going to need this tab for this application. This is all that's keeping these two contact points apart is this little piece of paper. So when I remove this, it'll start playing. So when this metal band contacts the metal pad underneath, that's when the sound is triggered. It's the basic gist of it, and that's basically all you need to know in order to see it from this height. Here is my little breadboard that I also have sitting uh, in Arduino and an XB uh, Wi-Fi shield on top of that. That's what I use for some of my electronic mock-up designs. In order to demonstrate my proof of concept before rearranging these pieces and placing it where I need to install them, I'm going to mock up the electrical design. Okay, you'll see a plus and a minus. Now normally these leads would go to your battery power supply for whatever you're going to power your breadboard circuit with. In my instance, my device already has has three coin cells. All I have to do is route that power, which is basically an audio signal that goes through my breadboard because we want to keep these leads separated for testing purposes. So I'll put one of these leads under here, making good contact on the bottom half of that. And I'll put my other lead on the top, only contacting. I'm going to keep this plastic tab in here because I only want to contact the top half. It's a little tricky. The black wire is only contacting the top band and the red wire is only contacting the bottom band and you have to keep that situated so it doesn't move so now we have the signal going through our breadboard and I have taken some breadboard leads and piped them out to a switch that's all that is is a little button switch so when I press that switch it should play the sound okay so that's proof of concept just to get some of this power routed to my breadboard so that's how I did it originally in order to test the the lever switch I just replaced that with the lever switch, and that worked just fine. And so this is kind of the prototyping phase. Now the switch in this instance, this is going to replace this 
button switch. And in order to do that, really all I have to do is screw one of these ends down under here. This is a normally closed switch. When I pull these apart by more than 20 millimeters, the switch will activate because that is the specified gap for this particular switch. There we go. Takes a little bit. If I connect this up to a door, when the door swings open, that's how I did my whole prototyping and uh, that's how I figured it out. And through further tests, I figured out that polarity doesn't matter. It just needs to complete the circuit. It doesn't matter which way negative or positive goes, just as long as it completes the loop. Without further ado, let's actually build and install this. So one of the first things I want to do is actually get the right sound on here that I want. And so make sure your contact point is closed, meaning you pull that little tab out there. And that's all there is to it. So that is the next generation door chime. And to play it, the next step is going to bend back this prong to reveal the solder pads. So I'm going to take my little cutters here and cut that tab off. So little tab cut off. And that is very sharp. Get a little file and just file that down. Now you can choose solid core wire, which I used in my last project, or if you need something a little bit more flexible, go with stranded core wire, and this application is not going to matter. Um, I used the solid core wire last time because I wanted it really fixed, and solid core wire is very thick. It's harder to twist, good for fixed applications. In this instance, I don't want to use that because I need to run this along a door edge. And this corner right here, I don't want to have to solder that in place. <laughs> Having my arms way up in the air trying to solder is going to be a pain, so I don't want to do that. Let's get to soldering. What I'm going to do is disconnect the speaker from the module because we want to lengthen these wires. These two wires now have to be about two or three feet long. So I'm just going to snip those two wires. And take that off. That's just a double-sided sticky tape. Okay, so I got my wire. I will be right back after I unsolder these little wires off the end and add the new wires. Again, polarity does not matter. Net positive and negative does not matter. Just get wires on there. So, proof of concept, that works. Okay, so polarity does not matter to the speaker. Okay. Got everything all soldered up. So here are the separate components. So we've got our switch, we've got our speaker, and we've got the module. So this part goes to the speaker, and again, polarity doesn't matter as long as they're connected. No, these are not soldered together. They're very, very close. <laughs> Thankfully, these two pads are pretty far away, so that was fairly easy. This was a much harder soldering job. It's not the best in the world, but whatever, as long as it works. And here's the actual diaphragm of the speaker. It looks vacuum formed. So let's go install it. So as long as I can stuff it back there and then run the wires down. Crap, I can't run the wires down here. Oh, that's right, I'm just going to put the speaker right there. I will just attach up there somewhere. I just have a hot glue gun. I'm just going to hot glue it. This comes with double-sided tape. Eh, it's pretty sticky. I could try that. Yeah, it seems to work pretty well. So, uh, eh, it's not too bad. It's obviously not as loud as I was kind of hoping for, and that was at max volume. It's just the sound itself that wasn't loud enough. If I really wanted to, I could throw it through an audio editing program bump up the gain on the actual sound clip, save the file to an mp3 or something, and then put it back in and re-record it so it's louder. So I changed the sound because I figured the Star Trek thing was kind of eh, outdated, so I wanted to go with something a little bit louder and something a little bit more modern. So here's the final install. Oh yeah, got some John Cena. 
Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Eh, just a neat, fun project. And if you're really into stuff like this, I highly recommend you pick up an Arduino. You'll have a lot of fun with those. It really helped me understand circuit design and how to do things like this. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'm not going to beg you to subscribe because I hate freaking people that beg to subscribe kind of crap. Uh, do it if you want. doesn't bother me either way. I do prefer that if you do like 